mind, Neff. Speak on it, then dump the trash and lock the back door like I asked you to a half hour ago. It's just... I grew up hearing all these stories about you, and I watched you playing chess with someone. And it doesn't seem to match up with the dapper dressing, golf and chess playing Negro you see before you, huh? I mean... Afghanistan? Special Ops? All those crazy black Rambo Fallujah stories? All the Street Fighter stories? Look, people tend to exaggerate things because they have a need to believe in myths. But the truth is, I am no Superman. I'm not even much of a fighter. See, it's your Uncle Cody. Now, he's the real badass. And you'll see that when he comes back here for good next week. And since he's my new partner at the bar, you'll get a chance to hear all of Uncle Cody's tall tales firsthand. But for now, you need to dump the trash like I asked <laughs> you to so I can get you back home. Because I do not want to hear my sister's mouth for keeping you out too late. A beloved Carmine's is now a fucking mooly hipster joint. Hell no, not on my fucking watch. Who wants this joint? Tell you what, I'm a businessman. So I offer 20k about what you paid, you pack up, set up in Bushwick or somewhere's the fuck else, and all's well. Capiche? No capiche. You gentlemen have a good night. We're closed. Hey, asshole. You know who this is? Relax. Polly, I got this. What's your name, wise guy? Payne. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking appropriate. Yeah. Listen, Payne. I don't think you fully understand. See, this place has what you call sentimental value to my community. Many a great man have drank, bled, and died here. Now you take the deal before I take it off the table and beat your ass with it. Checkmate. <sighs> you know, I feel you on the sentimental thing. You see, I know the pain of a son whose father was nearly murdered in a bar he wasn't even allowed inside of. And for that man's son to grow up and one day own that very bar. You see, first, you should have taken no for an answer. Second, you already fucked up by shoving my nephew when you first came in here. I was gonna let that slide because he needs to toughen up a little bit. And third, I heard that Mooley comment. Not cool. <laughs> Judging by your little jailhouse shuffle and them fucked up clothes you're wearing, you've been locked up for a while. Well, let me hip you to a few changes since you've been gone. Faucets now come on by themselves when you put your hands underneath them. We've had a black and an orange president, and this ain't Carmine's no more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you clearly have no fucking idea of who you talking to. Mm. And clearly, you do not understand the degree of a fuck that I don't give. Oh. <laughs> so, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna break your jaw for you, lump you up for GP, and then toss your ass out the window, because I've been thinking about changing that window out anyway. I'm gonna sleep Pauly Stream being over here last, so he can tell you what happened to you. That's after the cops throw you back in prison for parole violation on account of that 380 you're carrying on your right hip. But hey, you're smart for coming strapped. Mistake. Yeah? What's that? 